Years ago, many years ago now, my wife Jean and I were students at Moody Bible Institute, and our guest speaker and her husband were students at Moody Bible Institute along with us. And that's how we happened to know the skunk lady. She wasn't the skunk lady back in those days, but eventually she became the skunk lady. She can tell you how that happened. And we've seen pictures and articles in the newspaper about Judy, and she's been to Awana here at New Life many years ago, and, and uh, I think you're gonna enjoy hearing Judy speak about the skunks today. Her husband, Al, is at this little camera over here. I'm not sure why he's videoing this, but uh, Judy didn't know he was coming to do this today, so she may have something to say about that as well. But let's give a real good welcome to Judy Nauman, the skunk lady. There really are not a lot of people that are proud to be known as the skunk lady, <laughs> but I am. I'm very pleased to be here, and it is fun, and it did start in a very serious way at Moody Bible Institute, so it's a very blessed collection. Um, yes, yesterday, my husband and I celebrated 46 years of marvelous marriage. Thank you. We need that because today he is in the doghouse. <laughs> he said, can I come videotape? And I said, it's not even up for discussion. So, so I didn't discuss it, I just came. So here he is. So you may see the headlines, I don't know. Well, I want to tell you about skunks. Some of this you're going to know, some of this you're not going to know, hopefully. And some of it you probably wish you never did know. Uh, but I would like you to at least go away today with a different outlook and a different appreciation for a very, very beautiful, soft animal. Now, Dale was reading about uh, Edison just discovering uh, light and all that stuff and uh, the monkeys and that. But. Uh, I'll bring you back down to earth real fast here. Genesis, God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures after their kind, cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth after their kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth and the cattle, and God saw that it was good. And God made you and me, and we're good. Psalm 139 teaches very clearly that we are his creation and that he did not make any mistakes. Unfortunately, many people will look at this animal and they think that's a mistake. Well, what's good about that thing? It stinks. P-U. I used to teach, uh, not teach, but I used to share at schools about, well, I taught them a little bit about skunks. And invariably, you'd walk in the room, just like today, and the only thing you'd hear would be, ooh, P-U. <laughs> and there, I just looked at them and I said, excuse me? I, I don't smell anything. Do you smell something? I don't smell anything. But this poor animal has a reputation that just wins out over every good thing it has. Now there's an application there that you can think about a lot in your own life. What, I'll let you apply it the way you want to, want to apply it, need to apply it. But here's a beautiful animal, a beautiful creature that God has made and we look at it and go, it stinks. Well, yes, it does stink, but there's a reason for that. Now, over the years, I keep learning and it's fun to keep learning. This is a beautiful animal, gorgeous. This animal helps us. He helps control insects, rodents. He's not really a big bother to mankind, although I'll bet every one of you has a story that you could tell about the skunk. My dog found a skunk. Oh, yeah. you should smell the door. Oh, my dog, my cat. 
oh, under the cabin is a family of, oh my goodness, and on and on they go. The stories are all there. Or you're driving down the highway and you think it's so nice, and ooh, what's that smell? And then you think about the skunk. But he doesn't really bother us, does he? Did he get up in the morning and say, oh, I'm gonna go find a human being. I'm gonna go spray that human being, whether he likes it or not, no. And he does not spray quickly. Matter of fact, there are many documented, I speak from authority, <laughs> stories about people that have had pet skunks that were never dissented. One person lived in an apartment building in New York. Their apartment building did not allow pets. But several of the people in that apartment building had their little pets that they could put in the jacket and they would take them in and out. And one day this gentleman has his little pet skunk in his jacket. As the other neighbor lady gets on the elevator with her little pet dog, <laughs> the dog's yapping, the skunk is stiffening up, and nothing happened. He was so thankful. <laughs> They have a very, very soft fur, and if any, I won't make you touch them, but I would love to have you touch them. They're soft. Matter of fact, they used to be known as Alaskan sable, and women like to have Alaskan sable on their coats, and their cuffs of their coats, and they were quite proud of it. There wasn't any white on it, it was all black, and it was fine until it would rain. <laughs> And then as the moisture and dampness came into the pelt, <laughs> oh, what? It smells like a skunk. Well, that's funny, it is a skunk. <laughs> so they used to take and dye out the white part, make it all black, and sell it as Alaskan sable. But it is a very soft fur. If I had it, I would want the white. Have you ever thought about the sound a skunk makes? Sit down with your grandkids and say, oh, make it sound like a kitty cat, meow, dog, dog, bark, mm, dog, bark, bark, skunk. <laughs> well, what sound does a skunk make? Somebody just did it. <laughs> it's kind of like a chatter. It's just, it's not loud. It's kind of like a clicking sound. Um, so there's a lots of fun and nice things about skunks. The other thing that I want you to know, but you don't have to remember this, is that there's four kinds of skunks. Now I've got two of them here, but two of them I don't have. This one is the common or the striped skunk. That's the one we all know about. This one is called the spotted skunk. Some people refer to it as a civet cat, and there's quite a debate on that. I won't go into that, but there's the spotted skunk, there's the striped skunk, and then there's a hooded skunk. It has mainly just white up on top of its head. And then there's a hog-nosed skunk, which is bigger, and his proboscis is quite a bit larger, and it's bare, and he uses that for rooting, which gives him the hog nose name. Both of those are down in the south, Texas, Arizona direction, a little bit more than anywhere else. This little guy, because he's smaller, he can climb trees. The rest of them don't climb trees, and he's a little bit better as far as camouflaging. Well, it doesn't quite stand out. This gentleman stands out quite clearly, especially if he's walking across a green patch of grass. You can see him very, very well. Uh, the hooded and the hog-nosed, there's not many pictures, there's not many um, examples of them, but they are some of the different kinds. But I want to talk mostly about the striped one, the common skunk, the one that I like so much. He's a family of a, a member of a family called mustelides, and there's a whole bunch. You've got the weasels in there, and you've got other kinds of your ferrets, and some of these animals that let off these wonderful odors are in there. The skunk is nocturnal. Now, when you were younger, or maybe you still are, maybe you're nocturnal. Maybe you have your days and nights mixed up. You're awake all day, or you sleep all day, and you're awake all night, or vice versa. Um, but they're nocturnal. And that's one reason why when you do see a skunk wandering around during the daytime, you should be a little bit concerned about that. He's supposed to be sleeping, so why is he wandering around? 
Now, the odor is very, some word, people use the word obnoxious, um, potent. Hunters will use it to put on the bottoms of their shoes to mask the scent of man so that they will smell like a skunk, so that the deer will think everything's just fine because all that's run around here are men with skunk feet on or something like that. But anyway, uh, it covers the odor and uh, it's very strong. Now, this was another uh, concern at one point. I happen to like the smell of skunk. So when I smell it, we roll down the windows. And... <sighs> now, some people that know me and already realize that she doesn't have all of her facilities there, why do you like the smell? Well, I don't know why. But the newspaper, Associated Press, put out an article and said, is there anybody else in the world that likes skunks, the smell of skunks? And immediately, 350 people responded, I love the smell of skunk. Mm. And thus started what was called the Whiffy Club, <laughs> of which I was a charter member. <laughs> and it doesn't meet anymore. Uh, skunks are also known for carrying rabies. Uh, but there's not a lot of real good medical information about it. There's other animals that carry it too. So to just go and say, oh, there's a skunk. We better kill it, we must have rabies. Not a good reason, no. The other thing that I think is kind of cool about this animal is it's nearsighted. Now, most all of you have glasses. I have glasses. The thing is, the skunks don't have glasses. <laughs> oh, they never got into that, but uh, they can see things up close, but they can't see things far away, which is, now stop thinking about how God made this animal. Very interesting so far. But nearsighted? Don't you think maybe he should be able to see if that is a big grizzly bear over there coming over to get me? No, he can't see that. He's kind of just looking for those insects and rodents that are around and kind of stays to himself. He has some natural enemies. And the natural enemies he has are for various reasons. One, the biggest one, the main one, is the great horned owl. Guess what? The horned owl does not have any sense of smell. Amazing. So he flies down, picks up the skunk, the skunk sprays, the horned owl says fine, <laughs> goes to his nest, and he has supper. So it doesn't bother him. Another one of his enemies is the fox, the sly old fox. Now, we've heard stories about that fox. And do you know what he does to the skunk? He gets him going, gets him all riled up, makes him spray. Oh, sprayed once, makes him spray again. Ah, spray twice. <laughs> and the skunk can spray approximately five to six times before it's depleted of its weapon. And then what does the fox do? <laughs> he goes in and has his supper, just like that, not a problem. There's another one that is a very common one, and every one of you are one of them. It's these people in cars that drive and sometimes hit a skunk. That's just terrible. And the reason they keep getting hit is that when they go to climb across the road, they're just having a good old time, and they go, they say, whoops, I think I hear something. It's a car. <laughs> they stop. Oh, I need to do something. <laughs> they spray, and the car still hits them because they didn't think about hurry up and get off the road. They just stopped. So that's not too good either. Now, when the babies are born, and somebody said this was my problem. I haven't found my problem yet other than that part over there. But um, the baby skunks are born in the month of May. And I was born in the month of May. So I thought maybe that was my connection. There's about six little kittens born to a litter. They're about one inch long. They're pink. And I don't know if you can see this from where you're at, but on the underneath of this skin, you can actually see where the white is going to be on this skunk. 
And when they're born, they're just little pink, and you look at them and you can look down and say, oh, I know exactly where that stripe's going to be. And yet, there might not be a stripe, like this skunk. No stripe at all, but he's still a striped skunk. But no, no stripe there. So it's very interesting that already at birth, the white has already been set right into their pelt. Uh, they grow up fast. They uh, kind of go in single file. It's kind of cute. And remember, I mentioned that they were nearsighted. So they follow mother. The mother's going along fine. All of a sudden, mother stops. Baby stops because she ran into mother. Second baby stops. She ran into big brother or whatever. And they just, blah, 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 blah. they stop. They start paying attention and they start learning how to uh, fend for themselves. Now, we did have a skunk for a pet for a while. And I do not advocate that, um, mostly because they're nocturnal, they're meant to be outside. And no offense to you, Bill, but your salad today was perfect for a skunk. <laughs> oh, they like everything that was in that salad. And it's so much fun to watch them eat um, grapes and cherries and berries. They kind of roll them around and then they get in their mouth and they go, Pfft. you just see the delight that they have in eating those. And so they would have really enjoyed our lunch today. But they also enjoy mice and snakes and spiders and those things. And I didn't really want to keep those in the house for them to eat. So my uh, pet skunk had to eat just uh, fruit and vegetables and cat food and stuff like that. Um, they love turtle eggs. That's like ice cream to them if they can find some turtle eggs. And caterpillars are just wonderful. But you know, it's kind of like eating a sandwich with crust on it. Those caterpillars have all that fuzz on them. Oh, just terrible. So they take them and they roll that caterpillar in the dirt till they get that fuzz off. Now it's just right to eat and they can eat it. One of the things that I wanted, I, you might have some um, artistic ability here or some artists. I wanted to point out something to you. If you ever draw a picture of a skunk, notice the proportion of the head, very small. So when we had our pet skunk and we put a collar around its neck to take it for a walk, didn't work. Head slipped right out. So we had to put a harness on it. Also, if you notice, and I gotta hold it just right, but the front legs are shorter than the back legs. And then it has that big, beautiful, puffy tail. So if you think you're drawing a skunk, and every time you draw it, you go, oh, phooey, it looks like a cat. It's because the head's too big and the front legs aren't short enough. Make those two adjustments and you'll have a skunk. Try it and see. They have very long claws. And if any of you are daring enough to come up and look, you will be able to see their claws. They're long and they're curved. So when they're out in the forest or looking around, they're gonna look for a nice little rock. And they're gonna say, I'll bet you there's something under that rock. And they'll turn that rock over. Oh, yes, there's some grubs and some insects and they enjoy eating them very, very much. They also will use those big toenails for digging. They need a place to spend that winter. They're gonna hibernate. And so they dig, 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 dig. Or they might find an old log that needs some rearranging and some you know, make it look nice for the winter. Then they'll dig in there and get things out. Or they might find an old log, kind of like a woodpecker would do, you know. Go up and scratch it down. Ooh, there's some yummy things in there too. So they enjoy doing all of that. They've been made perfectly to feed themselves, to care for themselves, to protect themselves. Now this negative part, this part about their spray. Now I want you to think about that. Now you all think that's so terrible, at least I'm assuming you think that. But stop and think about how a skunk protects himself. Now I said there was really only one thing that was really bad about it, and it seems to be the smell. Everybody seems to agree to that. Hmm. And it has a lot of positives, but that negative always seems to win out. You know, I found that I'm kind of for the underdog. I'm kind of for the person that always has those problems. 
you know, you always hear things and, well, stop that. Now, let's say four nice things for every negative thing. Come on. And I think it's a good lesson to learn that, you know, there may be some negatives, there may be some problems, but you can always find some very good things. I want to tell you how a skunk gives you a warning for spray. Now, my family and I have been out camping. We have sat and put breadcrumbs in the fire pit as the skunks have walked under our lawn chairs. They go get the bread, we take a flash picture, no problem, they're fine. We've enjoyed that a lot. But there is that time when they may spray you and when they do, it's powerful. And if you were to be, uh, this is what I've been told. I've been told that if I had actually been sprayed in the face once, that I would not be standing up here talking about skunks. There's a temporary blindness that takes place. It's very potent. Matter of fact, I've often wondered, none of us will probably live this long, but I have a feeling that the essence of skunk probably contains a cure for something. Wonder what it might be. Hmm. Well, I don't think I want to do any of the scientific research on it, so it'll have to wait for a while. But when you're taking a walk in the forest at night and a skunk crumbs, comes across your path, you don't even need to take a second breath. Just stop. Just stop and let him go. He is not out to get you. But the worst thing you could do, and I've done this to the kids, and I hope you have strong hearts here because this is what you should not do. <laughs> now, if I did that to the skunk, I would scare him. And what does he think? He's got to protect himself. He doesn't know what's coming. So don't do that. Just stand there. Enjoy God's creature. Let him walk away. He won't harm you. But now if he decided, hey, I'm going to get that woman. I am. Here's what he would do. He would stop. And in this case, sir, you are the victim. He would look at you dead on. And he'd say, are you going to back up or are you going to continue? Oh, you're going to continue. Mm -hmm. I see. So he stops. He stamps his front feet. It's kind of cute. He just very fast, very rapid. And then he arches his back just like this one is arched. And then he raises his tail. That's when you better start paying attention. When the tail goes up, you might be in trouble. And he will either arch himself in a U-shape this way or a U-shape this way, and he will spray. And you've had it. Now, that spray will make you stop. It will make you close your eyes, and it'll make you very unpopular. <laughs> the best thing still seems to be tomato juice to get it out, something that will just take care of the acid, but anyway. So the skunk is not going to bother you without giving you a warning. He's going to stop, he's going to put his feet down, he's going to arch his back, he's going to put his tail up, and sometimes he does it all at once. Kind of can't stand there and go, oh, step one, two, three, four. No, it doesn't always work that way either. But I think we need to learn to respect what God has made and given to us. Now, I've alluded to this, but stop and think about, and I've decided, that this is the most courageous animal in the world. Well, Judy, he's just a little thing. He's black and white, he's not camouflaged. How can he be so courageous? Well, stop and think about it. You name one person that does not respect that animal when he sees him coming. <laughs> Now, God's done the same for us. He has given us everything we need to e either protect ourselves, to be bold in proclaiming his good news. We need to take advantage of what we have so that we can be used for his cause also. Well, the skunk is very precious. It's very beautiful. Um, 
One of the other things that I could share with you is uh, how he likes to eat bees. And this fascinated me. He'll go up to a beehive and he'll irritate those bees. And he'll get them to fly out into his tail. They get stuck in his tail. He brings his tail around to his mouth and eats the bees. Now, is that not unique? Think about that. I think that is just fantastic. So as you go out today and on in your days ahead, I want you to think about how unique you are. I want you to think about how unique this beautiful skunk that everybody goes, oh, P-U. He's beautiful, he's wonderful, he's God's creation, and we can really, really enjoy him. So I hope you have a different view of the animal today, and I hope that you can share with others that there's more than meets the eye, and sometimes you can't always tell a book by its cover. In the middle of your table are skunks. Each one of you are supposed to take one home with you today. If you don't want it, maybe you have a grandchild that could enjoy it, but please take those home and think about the lessons that you've learned.